Okay, this is a question that I shared in the community a few weeks ago, and I just want to share the answers to this question with you. So the question is, what's part of your daily routine that the average person, a non-TBI affected person, wouldn't understand? And a lot of members answer this question, and I want to share this in this podcast because I believe that it can make you feel less alone in your recovery. It can make you feel like you're, yeah, you're not crazy or you're, yeah, you're having the same thoughts as them. You're doing the same things as them. It always surprised me that when I read about those comments, it's like I'm reading my own words and maybe you feel the same. I just hope you find some recognition and yeah, that you feel less alone. So. Let me share their answers with you. Some of them, because I won't read all of them out loud because there are a lot, but I will read some of them out loud here in the podcast. So they are the answers to the question, what's part of your daily routine that the average person, a non-TBI expected person wouldn't understand. The first one, how much rest I need and how often I need to massage my neck muscles. The second one, Rarely turning lights on. The third one, light and sound sensitivity and napping a lot in the day, not that much at night. The fourth one, constant reminders. I have a to-do list that I write in every morning to get them off my brain. The fifth one, for me, it was or is not leaving the house, using a list on my phone to remember basic things like brushing my teeth and showering. The sixth one, putting in her earplugs for the coffee machine. The seventh one, first thing in the morning, placing a cold wrap around my neck while putting on makeup. The eighth one, daily reminders on my phone, especially for taking meds. Three calendars to remind me of appointments and daily simple things to accomplish. Light and noise sensitivity getting overstimulated in crowds and family gatherings, triggering anxiety and headaches. The 10th one, needing to rest more, communication, speaking difficulties, not being able to work or work as much, being easily irritated and overwhelmed with simple things, staying home more. The 11th one, Excel spreadsheet to help me remember to do all my VT and PT exercises and a really hard time waking up in the morning. I got too much sleep concussion and walking up before my body is ready is a huge struggle that has its own routine. The 12th one, mostly mental fatigue, but sometimes it's physical too. Otherwise, it's making sure I have earplugs when I'm leaving the house and setting reminders for everything so I don't forget. The 13th one, me wanting to rest after a long day of errands on work and exercise. The 14th one, I have a concussion kit I carry with me everywhere I go. Two sets of earplugs, an eye mask, lavender oil and Advil. The 15th one, walking how many things i have to consciously be aware of while walking to not trip or walk into something the 16th one me trying to control my nutrition as this felt like the one thing left that i could have control over 17th one that i don't plan two things on the same day if they ask me i have any plans that evening and still told them i couldn't they don't understand the 18th one, all the supplements I stack up throughout the day. The 19th one, uh, in order to reduce headaches, I have to drink a lot of water. The first thing I do when I get up in the morning is drink a lot of water. That seems to be the magic for me starting my day. Throughout the day, I'm continuing drinking a lot of water. And yes, I live in the bathroom, but it's better than going to urgent care for injections or headaches. Then 
the 20th one. I think this will be the last one. Otherwise, it will be a very long podcast. Uh, the last one that I can handle soft music without a beat, but not in combination with anything else. Talking plus music is a no go. Exercise plus music makes me dizzy, etc. That's why I avoid restaurants. So, oh, and then one, I just want to share the last one. There's another one that I can relate to. I wear basically the same clothes all the time. I wear either long or short dungarees and the only thing that changes is the top underneath. Doing this reduces the amount of energy spent getting dressed, choosing an outfit, thinking about clothes or making decisions. Anytime I try and venture into a new outfit, I get tired and end up putting my dungarees back on. So there are many things that I can relate to. Of course, not all of them, some of them. and. Maybe you feel the same. Maybe you notice, hey, this is something that I do as well. I just hope it makes you feel less alone, feel like you're not crazy, feel like, yeah, just just to find some recognition and that it's okay to feel the way you feel. Um, and if there is something that I didn't mention that uh, that you're maybe you're doing something specific, a specific task or a specific, you have a specific routine or something. I would love to hear about it. I would love to hear, yeah, just what your answer would be what, about what the average person wouldn't understand that you're doing. There's, there can be many things, many part of your daily routine that will be different than, um, than from a, let's say, healthy person. Um, and I would love to hear about them. So you can always let me know this on Instagram, send me a message and, um, I'm curious what your daily routine is and how it differs from someone who is not having a TBI. So let me know. And, um, for now, yeah, having a good day. Thank you for listening to my podcast. I really hope this was helpful for you. If it was, and if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, would you maybe do one small thing in return? Leave a short review or thumbs up on YouTube? The more views this podcast will get, the easier it is for other people to find this podcast and to feel less alone and lost in their journey. Oh, and one last thing. I would love it if you share a helpful episode on Instagram in a post or in a story and tag the concussion community in it. Or you can always send me a direct message. I love to see who is listening. Thank you so much and I hope to see you next time.